The Archdiocese of Chicago is a vibrant and diverse faith community. We celebrate our faith through worship, evangelization, and reaching out to the needy. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Welcome to Diakonia, a call to service. Diakonia is the Greek word for service and the root word for deacon. I'm Deacon Jim Norman, Vicar for Deacons with the Archdiocese of Chicago, blessed to serve at Our Lady of Sorrows Basilica on the west side of Chicago. I'm here with Deacon Dave Brinsick, Associate Director for the Permanent Office of the Diaconate, who serves at Holy Guardian Angels in LaGrange and Brookfield. Welcome, Dave. Welcome, Jim. Nice to see you again. And today we have another deacon with us, and that underscores that Diaconia is not a show for deacons. It is a show about our collective call, our common call to service as baptized Catholics. But we have Deacon Larry Sorcy with us today, who's taken on the call of the immigrant, as we've seen 38,000 immigrants come into the Chicagoland area. Deacon Larry Sorcy has engaged with deacons across the Archdiocese of Chicago and others to support those who are arriving to Chicago, find needed items, shelter, um, jobs, uh, and housing. Deacon Larry, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. Welcome, Larry. So before we get started, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, I'm married. Uh, be 40 years this year. Uh, Congratulations. My wife and I are blessed with uh, three grown sons, uh, two of which are married. Uh, and then we also have a couple of grandchildren in the mix. So we have a pretty busy family. Um, I was ordained a uh, deacon, permanent deacon, in September, uh, September 26th of 2020. Uh, so I was one of the guys ordained the COVID year. I serve uh, at Our Lady of the Holy Family Parish. The uh, parish is the combination of Notre Dame de Chicago and Holy Family on Roosevelt Road. And our parishes were combined about three years ago. What are some of the ministries you're involved with, Larry? Uh, our parish operates a food pantry. Uh, we serve about 200 households each week. Um, I partner with several other people for religious ed. Um, I'm involved with uh, training of liturgical ministers and supporting our parish's activities to bring uh, communion and do visits to the homebound. Larry, tell us about, at some point, uh, some of your focus and attention moved to those who were immigrating to Chicago, actually brought in on buses to Chicago. How did that happen, and, and how did this come to your attention as a need and someplace that you needed to step in and invite others? The, uh, the efforts of the uh, parishioners uh, that I'm working with to support the providing items for the asylum seekers really began because um, buses were stopping at our local police precinct, the 12th district on uh, near Southwest side and uh, randomly dropping folks off uh, who had essentially nothing. I, they would show up with uh, a jewel bag and that would be their entire possessions. Um, and they found themselves sleeping on the floor inside the police station or on the sidewalk outside. And so a group of us started to provide basic items like here's some sweatshirts, 
uh, let's arrange to see if we can get some food items and some of the necessities that you need. And that was the beginnings. And those beginnings really predated the day that the city marks as the start of the arrival of the asylum seekers. Uh, the folks that we first became engaged with and continue to support arrived in May of 2020 or 2022. Uh, and the city starts its counting of arrivals uh, at the end of August of 2022. So the folks that we have been working with and who have been instrumental in distributing collected items uh, arrived a little bit ahead of the wave that really began at the end of that summer. I think the interesting thing in, 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 that, in your, comment, your response, Larry, was that the parishioners and yourself saw this need emerge, which goes back to our introduction saying this is all of us. Um, and so that the group of parishioners saw these immigrants coming in or asylum seekers coming in earlier before it was noticed by our local city officials and determined to be a need or something that needed to be paid attention to. Yeah, and the response is really comes out of um, our Catholic mission to provide for the corporal needs of people that we encounter. Uh, the Corporal Works of Mercy outlines clothe people, feed people, help provide shelter. This is the core of what drove our initial efforts. Uh, it wasn't based on any kind of political consideration or that. Folks are here. They have a need. How can we help them? Okay. And then how did you move forward from those initial efforts to where you are today. So if you talk, share with that and let us know where you are today. So we realized that the problem was just bigger than what was happening in our backyard. Um, several folks that uh, have a community organizing background, some of our young parishioners specifically um, became really engaged in trying to support efforts to help these folks as they arrived here in the city. And there was an informal network, it still exists, um, where we can call around and share resources. And <clears throat> trying to identify and meet the needs of folks as they arrived uh, really pushed us to see what more we could do than just work with folks at the 12th district. Uh, before too long, we were engaged with a shelter in the Pilsen area. We have, were supporting activities at the 22nd district and the 15th district, as well as some of the areas uh, Northwest in the city. And primarily providing access to items that folks needed. Um, I had a casual conversation with uh, another deacon who happens to reside in Lake Zurich. And I said, you know, we're having trouble providing things like coats and sweaters and jackets for people. And he said, well, let me see if our Knights of Columbus and our Vincent de Paul Society out in our parish in Lake Zurich um, can help. And help they did. Um, we were getting truckloads of collected items, uh, not only from St. Francis de Sales Parish, but from other surrounding parishes in that area. Uh, Francis de Sales has become a hub for uh, collecting items in Lake County that end up down in the city for distribution to the various shelter locations. Fantastic. Where do you see your efforts and initiatives going? What's, what have been, and, and let maybe start this way, what have been some of the key accomplishments and what are some of the challenges? I think uh, when we look back and can say we provided over 1,700 coats to people this winter, as well as other items, uh, like personal care kits, things like soap and shampoo, uh, gloves, hats, scarves, mittens, um, 
all of those things are the result of the generosity of so many different people. And I think that's the most um, rewarding part of this is to see the efforts of so many people engaged to try and provide something for folks who have a need. Um, in the challenge department, I think the biggest challenge has been communicating with all of the various different agencies uh, that have a piece of the pie in terms of helping folks. Um, certainly Catholic Charities uh, has stepped up in the area of providing food and helping relocate folks and find them permanent places. The city of Chicago has reorganized how they're greeting people when they arrive here. There's now a central location, which happens to be in our parish. Um, we're referring to it as a landing zone. And so this is the first point of contact with people coming to the city from these various locations uh, along the border areas. Um, so that's changing how we're going to have to see our mission to provide things for people. Uh, we need clearly be integrated with the city to make sure that we're not duplicating efforts and that we're not undermining any efforts that they have engaged in. Our alderman, uh, okay. Alderman Bill Conway, has been particularly good, I think, uh, in helping us keep access to what's happening with the city. Uh, he and a couple of other aldermen have organized um, counseling sessions to help folks with their immigration paperwork. Um, the process of getting here starts with permission to be here. Then you have to seek permission to do other things, permission to work, permission to reside, uh, permission to relocate. You have to be able to be at a place where the federal government can locate you if you move. And there are different grades of permissions at each step in terms of the paperwork process. And so the aldermen have stepped up to help council folks so that they can advance from permission to be here to temporary permanent status, eventually to get a green card, and then hopefully down the line to apply for citizenship. But there are multiple steps along the way um, that folks need help with. Yeah. And that is a whole separate other undertaking than that little piece that we're working with, with coats and sweaters and mittens. Okay. We are coming close to br a break here. So when we come back from break, um, I just recently, I think our listeners have probably heard that they approved a $7 billion, was that, is that correct, additional aid package for immigration, for the asylum seekers, anticipating yeah. that the buses will return um, moving toward the Democratic Convention, which will be held here in Chicago. I just wanna, how are you, we'll come back after break and, and find out how you're preparing for that and how the listeners and we can support you in that effort. We'll be back in just a few minutes. I feel special. <laughs> I feel great. I got good grades. We've seen a huge surge in our kids now meeting or exceeding grade level. Come check us out. You may have never thought we were an option before. Our school communities provide students with academic excellence and character education in a supportive and stable learning environment. Come see for yourself. Visit artchicago.org slash findaschool. 
Did you know that Catholic Charities accepts car donations? If you're ready to free up space in your garage and put a stop to all those expenses that go along with owning a car, we will gratefully accept your donation, whether the car is running or not. You choose a pickup time that is convenient for you, and we will make the donation as easy as possible free of charge. You'll receive a charitable donation receipt as well. We accept all types of vehicles nationwide, and you will know that your donation is made to Catholic Charities, an agency you can trust. To learn more about donating your car, call 877-786-4483. That's 877-786-4483. Thank you. I am a seminarian. The church needs compassionate and well-trained priests to help guide each of us through life. What inspires me, what draws me always to the priesthood is continue to see priests be a beacon of hope for other people. You can play a part in the education of these young men as they prepare for a life of service to others. I want to be that beacon of hope too, and it, it sets my heart on fire. To support our seminarians, make your gift at archchicago.org slash seminarianfund or call 312-534-7959. At my right hand or at my left he is not for me to give but Welcome back to Diaconia. Deacon Jim Norman, Vicar for Deacons with the Archdiocese of Chicago, joined by Deacon Dave Brinsick, Associate Director for the Permanent Office of the Diaconate, and importantly our guest, Deacon Larry Sorcy, who's been doing some outstanding work with the asylum seekers that have come into Chicago over the last two years. Uh, before break, Deacon Larry, we were talking about uh, the recent news that the city of Chicago has uh, approved additional funding for asylum seekers, anticipating uh, a kind of a renewed egress or ingress into the city of, of Chicago prior to the Democratic Convention. I think Dave wanted to ask some questions about that uh, and, and how we might be able to help and support. So Larry, do you think recently now, are the migrants still arriving in the same numbers as they did several months ago? I think the, uh, the number of arrivals each day seems to be somewhat diminished, but it's a little bit difficult to track because my understanding is they're dropping folks in areas outside of the city and saying, here, get on the train, take a bus, and once you get into the city, someone will engage you and help you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not seeing the numbers directly dropped off at city locations than we had been. I think the other thing that's happened is the U.S. government and the Mexican government have gotten together to uh, help manage the number of applicants uh, and how that process is working. So there doesn't seem to be, at this point, uh, quite as many folks coming through the system uh, as we had seen earlier in the year. Um, so that gives us a chance to take a breather and prepare for what the next steps might be. And what do you th see those next steps being? Well, the city has uh, folks housed at uh, field houses in parks around the city. Uh, Gage Park on the southwest side, a um, few places on the north side. And they have committed to those uh, park managers and the residents and aldermen of those areas that those folks would be relocated to uh, permanent housing of some type uh, and no longer be living basically in those field houses. So that's what the city's engaged in now. Um, and hopefully that will give the city a sense of what it needs to do um, in a logical progression as folks arrive. Um, the landing zone has some temporary shelters. Uh, there are some places that were set up a year and a half ago that were supposedly temporary 
that are still being occupied by folks. Um, and it's not easy to find locations for people to be in. Uh, I know the if you're interested in sponsoring a family or reaching out and doing something direct with uh, someone or some a family unit, for example, um, the best place to do that is to, through Catholic Charities. Um, I think in terms of planning for what might happen at the end of the summer, to really gear up, we would need to find a suitable location to start collecting the kinds of supplies that families and individuals need. Uh, families are always in need of things like Pampers. Mm -hmm. Pampers take up a huge amount of storage space compared to how many socks you can fit in a box. Um, so that is one of the key things that we'd like to see uh, materialize, I guess. Um, can we find a suitable location to start collecting the items that we know will be in demand uh, as we go through the summer uh, and approach the time of the Democratic National Convention? Uh, we've been looking for the better part of a year now and still have not been able to find a suitable location. Um, we're still praying and hoping, but um, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. So that's an opportunity if there is a uh, pastor or parishioner listening uh, to this broadcast today, they could, if they have space available, reach out to you um, and offer that space up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are, are there the are, other thing that we ahead. know we're going to be in need of uh, is luggage, luggage and backpacks. Uh, these folks are transient. The by and large, their accommodations are temporary in nature. And at some point, they're going to be asked to move um, and hopefully move to some place that they can permanently reside in. Um, but they have to be able to pack up their things in a reasonable way and take them with them. So the next push for us in terms of items that we're looking to collect is luggage. So the last time we got a large delivery of items, we displaced the priests at our parish, we booted them out of their garage space so that we had room for things. Uh, I see this happening again. Hopefully they won't be pushing back too much while we do this. Um, but that's part of the part of the challenge in terms of the logistics of just dealing with the items. Um, folks have been tremendously generous um, and we have had, I don't know, several tons of items that we've distributed here since uh, the middle of last year. And if I had to warehouse it all, uh, I couldn't. It'd be under tarps in the parking lot at the parish. And uh, that's not a good thing. How, I guess we've, we've talked about your efforts. I, I guess, um, have there been any what I'll call gifted or blessed moments along the way from you in this effort? Yeah, I have, uh, I've made the acquaintance of a young fellow from Venezuela uh, who basically walked up here uh, from his hometown. And uh, he and his brother uh, now have arranged for a place to live. Um, they've got support from a number of different people uh, to manage that. And they have made a commitment to help distribute items to folks that are arriving. This is their payback for the reception that they have received. And it is most gratifying. Mm. The other piece is how much support we have received from the folks in Lake County, particularly, but also throughout other places in the, in the diocese. Um, folks have stepped up and said, I have this, can you use it? And as this plays out, we're going to be looking for things like furnishings for apartments. Great, we've got an apartment for you to live in. Okay, 
Does is there a bed? No, it's just a room. So those kinds of things will be another challenge ongoing. Um, but the focus of our efforts has been what can we do in the initial arrival phase? Okay. What are the items that people most need? This is something that we've been able to manage to provide uh, and hopefully will continue to. Larry, how can, if, if uh, someone listening wanted to make a donation or get engaged, what's the best way for them to reach you? Um, probably through, uh, either through my uh, parish office at Our Lady of the Holy Family or um, through my archdiocesan email. Um, I'm, I don't keep regular enough office hours to say, call me at any time, uh, but I would certainly be able to respond to uh, an email or uh, someone's outreach contact. And, um, and what is your archdiocese email? The archdiocesan email is asorce at archchicago.org, archchicago.org. I also, Larry, I know that you've been equipping those asylum seekers and also equipping yourself to be able to communicate. You've been taking Spanish classes yourself to more effectively no. communicate Me and engage. Me español es muy poquito. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, the work you've been doing has been grande. So on the other side, uh, for someone who speaks just a little bit of Spanish, but we're eternally grateful for the work that you've been doing as well as the parishioners there at your parish and your engagement of us all. So we want to encourage during this session to have any deacons, parishioners that are interested in supporting your efforts, supporting asylum seekers that are coming to the Chicagoland area, being the face, the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ to those most in need. Uh, to reach out to you by email or contact you at your parish so that we can continue and you can continue your good works. And you're being modest in the uh, role that the Deacon Council has taken to support this. The Diaconate Council has been um, very, very involved in keeping lines of communication open as we try and gather and centralize resources. And uh, it is something that should be mentioned. It's not only a handful of us. This is uh, an effort that reaches and spans the entire diocese and touches all of the deacons that are involved. So, yeah. So Thank true. you, Larry. So we true. hope to, at, as a result of this show, to engage many more. Thank you for joining us for a show of Diaconia, a call to service. Uh, welcoming the immigrant. We'll be back again later to hear more about what Larry is doing. like I have been back.